Look at there, Margaret. Looks to be a real nice day out today. Good day to take a walk in the park, I think. I want a divorce. Yeah. Nice day. Boy, it sure has been a long winter, though. It's nice to see the springs finally come around. You know, I saw my first robin the other day. Earliest I'd seen one in years. I think maybe, maybe it's a good sign. I said I want a divorce. I think a walk in the park would do us both good. Air things out a bit. Everything gets so stale when it's shut up all winter long. Nice walk in the spring air can change a person's whole perspective. My mind's made up. Maybe I should wear my new coat. What do you think? It does look to be a bit chilly out still. Edward, talk to me. I'm leaving. Probably stay with my sister Emma for a while. I'm not quite sure about after that. You know what's a funny thing about the robins? You know, how, they, how they leave and then return the next spring. I wonder why they just don't stay someplace where it's warm year round. You ever wonder why they do it? Do what? They'll leave and then, then come back again. But something inside makes them do it. Something deep inside, something they can't control. Something that people are going to never fully understand, no matter how hard they try. Edward, I'm going to go. My sister will be by to pick me up, and then I'm going. I guess it's just one of those things about the Robins. One of nature's mysteries. Can I get your coat for you? I can say it still looks to be a bit chilly, huh? Edward, I'm going. I want a divorce. I don't want to walk. But we need to talk now before I go. Weather girls. Yeah, there was a time when women didn't do the weather. They stayed home. Most men would have said, knew their place. Oh, what a lot of nonsense, eh, Megs? That's just the way things were then. You know, I remember back to when we first got together. Uh, things were different then. It was a different world, all right. Different world, different, different expectations. <laughs> I remember when your father first met me, he didn't like me one bit. Figured I was nothing but a slick city boy looking to take advantage of his innocent farm-raised daughter. Nearly ran me off, like in one of those old movies, the business end of a shotgun. Now, that's not exactly true, and you know it, but you're changing the subject. Now, I remember quite plainly, double barrels and all. Oh, Edward, just stop. You don't remember it that way. You just happened to come over when he was sitting on the front porch cleaning it. The breach was open, and the shelves were locked up in the cabinet. It's the only way my mother would allow a gun in the house. But we need to talk now, not reminisce. Yeah, still... I got the idea that... That you were supposed to treat me right. And if it wasn't completely an accident, him cleaning the gun and you're coming over, then that's what he was saying in his simple country way is, make sure you take care of my little girl. Yeah, and I always did, didn't I? Yes. You did. I never had any complaints there. Well, then stop with all the silly talk about going to see your sister. It's not talk, and it's not to visit. It's to stay. Now, your mother, ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, she liked me from the very start. Good judge of character, that woman. And your dad eventually came around with time. If by that you mean he never shot you, then I guess he did. Could you help me with this? Oh, helpless as a child. Oh. It's true what they say about men having to go through a second childhood when they get old. They stop screaming. Well, I would have gotten it. I would have gotten it, you know. I know. As long as you know, I would have I know. Yeah. Just take your walk. 
I thought you were coming. I said I didn't want to go. But Megs, it's such a beautiful day out. First one in such a long time. You know something, Edward? You're amazing. You can't remember what happened two weeks ago, and now you're remembering back all those many years ago when we first met. I think your memory's getting selective. Well, it's one of the few advantages of getting old, I guess, huh? What? Senility? No, no, no. Selective memory. For example, that, that got off a wallpaper paste you served yesterday morning and called oatmeal, or that slice of burnt charcoal that you called toast. <laughs> now, I can only vaguely recall, but that night, 47 years ago, when you first had me over to your parents' house for supper, I can still remember every blessed little detail. Peas. We had peas and mashed potato. Country style, with, you know, with skins in and uh, chicken with dressing. And it was a lovely spring day, just like this one. You coming? It was duck, fall, and green beans. My dad had just come back from shooting those ducks. That's why he had the gun out. Just been used and needed cleaning. Had nothing to do with you. But I could see where it would be more exciting to remember it your way. You've always had a unique way of remembering and forgetting. And no, I'm not coming. But it's so nice out. It'd just be such a shame to waste it. Then go. Don't waste it. We'll talk later. After our walk. I know a lot of things are going on you at this age. God knows they're going on me, but last I knew, your hearing wasn't one of them. No, I'm staying. For now, anyway. At least until we have our talk. Go. Walk. Enjoy the nice day. Hello. That's the way it works when no one goes with you. But Mays, you know I don't like walking alone. I've never understood why you can't do things by yourself. All these years stuck together like glue every minute of every day. I swear, fully expect to wake up beside you and find ourselves surgically attached like Siamese twins. So you're absolutely sure you're not coming? Absolutely sure now. You're giving me a headache. Oh. Well, if you're not feeling well, then maybe I shouldn't go. Besides, I don't like walking alone anyway. And knowing that you're not feeling well, I, I just worry. Let me get you something for your headache. Let me go get you some aspirin. Ah! Ah! You are so frustrating. If you want to really get me something for this headache, then get me a divorce. Guaranteed, that will make it go right away. I'll get you an aspirin. Edward? Yes? Take your damn walk. But you're sick. I'm not really sick. You're just saying that, so I'll go. Well, I'm not going. Now, I know the difference between chicken and duck. I don't even like duck. Never have. It's greasy. It's all dark meat. <laughs> even when it's raised, it has a kind of wild taste. Yeah. But that meal, oh, I remember every bite of it. Your mother was a wonderful cook, you know. Oh, Edward, that's a perfect example of extremely selective memory. Whenever it's convenient, you suddenly get very selective, like now. And I know you're hearing me. It was duck, dark meat, grease, and all. What you're really remembering is the company. First love. I guess all young love is blind and apparently without taste. 
Everything is so much more intense when you're young and in love. Not because it's better, but because it's new. Like us. We were new once, and that's what you're remembering instead of the dark. My mother couldn't cook to save her life. You did everything you could to avoid eating over after that. Which, by the way, explains the oatmeal. Three generations of just add water fresh from a can cooking. And our family from scratch was just add milk and some, an egg. Now, my daddy could cook. He was part of his upbringing. Cook what you raise. Cook what you catch. Well, what you're trying to say is you don't feel up to cooking tonight. You know, we could always go out to eat. Yes. Yeah, we could go out and get a, a chicken dinner at that nice little Italian place over on 4th. Yeah. It's been forever since we got out to eat for no particular occasion. It seems like forever since we, since we had chicken. Some fresh air. A nice dinner. It'd be good for both of us. I still don't want to go out. Oh, we go change your mind once you're out in that fresh, clean air. I said I don't want to go. Besides, it's cold, and we live in the city. Oh, yeah, I, I'm aware of that. So? So the fresh air that you're talking about smells like bums, diesel bus fumes, and stinking garbage. It's Tuesday. The streets all smell like garbage. Tuesday is trash pickup day. Remember? And unless it rains, everything is going to have a Tuesday smell all day. Not that the city ever smells particularly wonderful. And besides, that place on 4th closed three years ago. Shut down because of the health department, rats or cockroaches or something like that. Now, way back when we lived in the country, I could actually open the windows to let the sounds and smells in. Trees, fresh cut grass, the wildflowers, peep frogs, and crickets at night. <laughs> and who's having a selective memory moment now? How about chicken manure, and the, the roosters at sunup, and milking the cows to stop them from mooing, and shoveling mountains of never-ending animal crap? Yeah, who's being selected now? There were the robins. Yeah, there were the robins. I miss the country. Well, you know, we moved it, moved here for my work. You said we'd move back someday. So we'll, we'll move back someday. We couldn't afford to when we talked about it a few years ago, and things haven't changed. They never have. But the money I made bought us a comfortable life here. That's why we moved next to the park. It was more like the country than the rest of the city. Trash and muggers aren't exactly the country. We never had to worry about the cows or squirrels mugging us. The city sure has changed. And so have we. This used to be such a nice, quiet neighborhood. We used to go walking in the park nearly every day. Yeah, we knew the people on the streets, our, our neighbors, by name. We used to go out for chicken. Or fish on Fridays. Yes. So, let's pretend it's Friday and let's go get us a nice big basket of fish and chips. What do you say, Megs? I guess it's about time I told you something. Well, unless you're about to confess that you had an affair with a fishmonger, I think you can wait till we get back. Besides, my mouth is watery just talking about it. Come on, let's get our coats and go. This is kind of important. Well, more important than fish and chips? Listen, stop and listen. I don't like fish and chips. As a matter of fact, I can't stand them and never could. But we went out for fish and chips nearly every Friday for years. Because it was something that you enjoyed. You mean, you never even liked it? Not a haddock, pollock, cod, or scrod. But you, you should... never wanted to hurt your feelings. You should have said something.
did it because it was something that made you happy. I know a good part of this is my fault, and I guess I should have said something before now, but I've reached the point where I'm not sure I exist at all, separate from you. I'm like a shadow, insubstantial, having no existence. I'm afraid that someday someone will come along and turn off the light and I'll be gone. And you, you'll still be there alone, but there nevertheless and helplessly trying to put on your coat you understand, Edward, it's more than fish and chips, the robins in the country. It's never having been a me. It's helping you with your coat. It's life having been a big what if with the giant question mark on the end instead of an exclamation point or at least a definite period that says, this is what I did, who I was. Well then, I'm sorry I wasted your life. You know, I thought I was a good and thoughtful provider, but apparently I got that all wrong. You know, it would have been nice if you could have given me a clue a lot sooner. You know, Edward, that's not it at all. You've always been a wonderful provider. And there's never been a moment's doubt that you loved me with all your heart. It's me, all me. I've always been what others expected, needed, or wanted me to be. And now, just let me go. Boy, you really can't put your coat on for yourself. Take your walk. Get those fish and chips you love so much. Save the money. No, I don't even feel like fish and chips now. Or to walk even. I think I'll just sit here and watch the birds for a while. So. Probably for the best. Who knows, I might even see another robin if I sit and watch long enough. Come, watch with me. I watched with you yesterday and the day before. I don't feel like it now. Well, that's what you said yesterday. But you did watch with me. And you seemed to enjoy it. At least I thought you did. You even, you even smiled, said it reminded you of the country. That wasn't yesterday. That was five minutes ago. Was it? I could have sworn that five minutes ago we were, you were helping my, my coat and we were discussing... Not the birds, the country. Oh, well, that. Yes, that. Not that it matters to you. Bob and Sarah have invited us to the country. I can't count how many times. Yeah, I know that. But you know I don't like to fly. Besides, it's expensive. We don't have that kind of money to spend on a weekend. Sarah said that Bob would be happy to pay for the tickets. And it was two weeks, not a weekend. But you just keep sitting there, staring out the damn window, gathering dust like some old knick-knack. I wonder if other people gave us all these souvenirs of their trips because they liked us or felt sorry for us. Or maybe they felt that we didn't have enough useless stuff of our own to dust. Well, it can't be that. 
I have you. Oh. This from the, from the woman who won't even go out for fish and chips? Or, or for that matter, to the distant and far flung regions of the window to watch the birds? He heard a fine one to talk. You haven't even been beyond the end of our street in nearly three years. And for that matter, you didn't even remember that that Italian restaurant had closed, Mr. Go No Further Than The Park. Oh. oh, Edward, I'm sorry. Let me get your binoculars. No, I don't want them. For watching the birds. And it's Wednesday. Today is Tuesday. No. Trash pickup day. They, they moved it to Wednesday six months ago. But I always put it out on Tuesdays. I know, on Tuesdays. And I go pick it up and take it out the next day. Why, why didn't you just tell me? I did. Wait, wait more times, but I can't remember. I certainly would have remembered if you had. But that's why I do it. I don't understand. To avoid this argument. We've had a... Far more times than I care to remember, and way more times than I ever wanted it. Alex. And I'm, and I'm just not physically able to go looking for you when you go wandering off alone in the dark. I don't understand. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to tell me that I'm going senile? Is that what you're saying? You certainly aren't someone who should be talking about other people losing their minds. No, of course not. I just thought it would be nice if we could sit and watch the birds together for a while. Just a little while. It'd make me happy. If it'll make you shut up. But just until my sister arrives. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. We certainly didn't go a lot of places together over our lifetime, did we? Way more than all our friends put together. And we will go visit the kids on the coast sometime soon? Yeah, the first chance we get. Oh, that's good. I really do, Miss Sarah. I know. Yeah, I miss her too, you know. It's just been so long since I've seen her. What's wrong, Edward? No, nothing. Just, just thinking about Sarah. We should go right away. Before we change our minds. We put it off way too many times. Yeah, you, you never do really know when you're going to run out of time, do you? We won't put it off. First thing tomorrow, I'll start making plans. We've been good together, haven't we? Oh, Mags. What on earth makes you ask a damn fool question at a time like this? On any other day, no. But today, I'd like to hear it, if just once. More than anyone ever had a right to expect. Yes. We were damn good together, Mags. And first thing tomorrow. 
I won't, I won't forget. Sometimes forgetting is a good thing. There's no pain in forgetting. Until you remember again. I know. I won't forget. Yeah, I won't let you. You never have. And I never will. That's my girl. Edward? Yeah? Tuesday was a better trash day. It seemed to rain more on Tuesdays. Why is wet trash better? I, somehow I don't think the guys who pick up that wet garbage would agree with you. <laughs> what they think is not my problem. They're well paid, rain or shine. Margaret. Oh, well, they are. And it comes out of our pockets. What we've paid out in taxes over all these years could have just as nicely paid for some trips to the coast. Before. I don't want to leave you. Upsetting you. Oh, Megs, Megs. If I could, if I could take care of you by myself, you, you know I would. So, what time? Time now. You know something? It isn't true. Well, what is it true? About time flying when you're having fun. You reach a certain age and it all flies, whether you want it to or not. One day, we're young, full of dreams and plans. Just starting out. And then the next. The next. The next, you're looking back on a full life spent with the only person you could have ever wanted to spend it with. I have no regrets. No regrets? I, I have one. No, no regrets. <laughs> Young people are so impatient. Yeah, places to go, things to do. I, you know, we were young once, and just as impatient as I remember it. We had dreams and plans. Today, they're just impatient. See? Oh, Mags. Don't owe Mags me. It's rude. Want to be ignored? And not to be able to wait. It's not reasonable to expect old people to spring to the door like a 20 year old. It's rude and damned impatient. But yet, you know, when, when you're right, you're right. Yeah. All young people should just assume that all old people are, are slow and crippled and helpless and. and I, I, I didn't mean it, Emma Mags. I, what, what I meant is... It's all right, Edward. Just answer the door. Hello, I'm from Longview. I'm here to make a pickup. Um... Is, uh, is this, is this the Wilson residence? Yeah, <clears throat> yes. Um, just a moment. The young man from... They're here. I heard. 
I, I packed your bags. And I think I got everything, but, but, but if I didn't... I, You'll be sure to send it along. I'll be sure you get it right away. Guess I'll be off to my sister's now. First thing tomorrow. You start planning our trip to the coast. Promise? I promise. But before you go. Yes? It, it just occurred to me that, that you never finished explaining about the garbage and the rain. It isn't important. But maybe it is to me. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt. I you. said we need a moment. I'll wait outside. Patience, huh? Young people. Oh, Edward. Well, I didn't like his tone. It was like he was here to take up some old moth-eaten couch to take to the Salvation Army. That's not true. He seemed not nice. Oh, I suppose. But still. Edward. All right, all right. Maybe I overreacted a bit, but... But, but it's just... I just, I wanted this moment to be... Longer? Yes, but... It's, it's like memorable. And special. Lasting. Yeah. Yes, that's the word. Lasting. So, so tell me. Why is Tuesday a better trash day? I already told you. The rain. Yeah, I know. And the mad wet trash guys and how they're overpaid, but I still don't get the connection. It's country rain. It comes in from the country hills. It isn't from here. The city hasn't taken away its luster and made it old and dingy. It's always so clean and fresh and new. And it washes away the stink and the dirt, even for a little while. And everything it touches, even for the trash, glistens and shines, even for a while, and seems less old and discarded. Everything eventually wears out. It must one day be put out. It's just the way things are. But the rain, the rain gives those things one last Fleeting extra moment of life they wouldn't otherwise have. Thank you, young man. I think we'd better be going now before it rains again. Do you think it will rain again, I mean?
Thank you. 